Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Falcon. In this one I have for you an overview of the Unternehmen Zentrum division, which is a new division available in the new Udino update. Please remember that this is early access so what you see may be subject to change. I'm going to be going through all of the units of course and we'll put together a quick deck. I'll also discuss a little bit about the traits. So starting off in the logistics tab, we have the MTLB munition. This only has 500 munitions, but it is armored. So potentially a decent unit for supplying the front line. Something also to consider now in the latest patch, units that have less supply can resupply from those that are bigger. So for example, you could bring in one of these big old MI26s. You can send your supply back to them and your MTLB will fill up and you can send your MTLB back to the front line. So you can kind of ferry backwards and forwards. So a unit like this can be useful for that role now. Uh, the MTLB is also amphibious, which is useful. Then we have the T813, 2000 supply per unit in these. Very good for sitting by uh, big AA units like Cubs and Books that have like large supply costs for their AA. Then we have the Euro, which comes with 1,000 supply per unit, uh, 35 points. And there's the MI8T, which comes with 1,500 supply. You get four of these on a card, uh, so a total of 6,000 supply, same as the T813 uh, overall, that is, between all of the units on a card. Then we have the MI9. Now, command helicopters have become a lot more useful in the latest patch because you can use them to capture your back sectors. So if you bring in one early, they're nice and cheap. You can just capture the sectors uh, closest to your base and then maybe capture the forward sector and then bring this back uh, for when, and then just push it back into a sector if it ever gets recaptured. Um, so yeah, these are kind of more maneuverable. Now they don't have to just like sit in a sector to, in order to capture it permanently. Uh, you can just land capture it, take off, go put it somewhere safe for the time being. And we have the BTR-50PU. Uh, this has three traits. It has the leader trait, which increases the veterancy of nearby units. We have the amphibious trait, and we also have this resolute trait. Uh, now, the resolute trait for Unternehmen and Zentrum is mostly on the East German units uh, and some of the other units. Basically, they take less suppression in combat which is actually quite a nice trait to have. It's a really nice trait to have, honestly. Um, so 100 points. I'm not sure if it's really going to affect the leader much, but I just thought I'd point out the trait now. Then we have the BMP-1K SP-2. Uh, this thing can actually obviously fight back if it comes under fire. Um, so maybe a useful vehicle for engaging at uh, sort of sectors where you are contesting. Then we have... The standard Jeep, uh, it's only 63 km per hour off-road speed, so not as good as some of the Jeeps on the NATO side, but still, it's a Jeep. When you get three on a card, it's not too bad. And then the SBW uh, 40P2K, uh, which is a amphibious armoured command. And then, of course, the M26 with 6,000 supply per. So the nice thing about these is you get technically 12,000 supply per card which is really, really good. It's like the most supply you can get out of any supply card. Moving on to the infantry tab, we have the Vopus, uh, the Vopus Führer. These guys have the leader trait and the security trait, which is the trait which increases their optics and identification levels to good when not moving. Uh, so optics here goes from normal to good. Uh, unfortunately, there are no military police in this division, so the like standard Vopus here just, again, security units. They can come in with the W50 and the SBW PSH, which is sort of like this cool security vehicle. Very nice. Then we have the PKM as our machine gun option, number one. Uh, there's the uh, Fauschemjäger PKM, the difference being both of them are resolute, but one has the airborne trait, so it can forward deploy at the start. It does cost you an extra five points to bring it in. Uh, this normal PKM, though, can be brought in with the SBW-70 and the uh, BMP-1 SP-1. 
Then you also have the big boy gun, the NSV, which has the 1,400 meter range, similar to a 50 cal, so that's really nice. And then we have the grenade launcher, the 30 mil AGS-17, uh, which can be brought in again with the SPW-70 and the BMP-1 SP-1. Then we have the Fausham Jaeger SPG-9. This can be forward deployed with the 3,534 meter advanced deployment. It's actually a potentially great option for transport sniping early on. And then there's also the Fargo uh, Fausham Jaeger as well that can forward deploy, but not as good because the missile travel time doesn't allow them to transport snipe as well, but you will be able to get them into nice positions early on for sure. Then there's the UAZ 469 SPG-9. It has the resolute trait and uh, that extra penetration is going to be handy. Resolute traits good for these sorts of units because they already have relatively low accuracy and so resolute trait basically stops them from getting suppressed and therefore their accuracy and so on getting too low. Uh, but then we have Modestrauki. Uh, Modestrauki do have, well the Modestrauki Omroti and the Modestrauki BMP, they have this trait called IFV Infantry. Now, IFV Infantry when they are near IFVs, take less suppression in combat. So that is something definitely to bear in mind if you're using a unit with that trait. The units themselves also have that trait, like the BMP-1P here has the IFV infantry trait. So those are the ones you're going to want to match them with. Whereas like the BTR-80 here, for example, does not. So do bear that in mind when picking your transport. Uh, but this is just the Montestroki Comrotti unit anyway. It has four strength with the RPG-22. Then we have the BMP-1P, which is pretty standard. Uh, 14 penetration. It does have the Fargo-16 uh, penetration. So a nice option to bring these in. You can bring them in the BTR-80 and the BMP-1PG, which does have the AGS-17 launcher, the grenade launcher plus the uh, HGM as well. So decent support choices if you're going to bring in this Modestrauki Camrotti. We also have the Modestrauki BMP that can choose between the BMP-1P and the BMP-1PG. Uh, then there's the standard Modestrauki that do not have those IFV traits uh, that can come in the standard truck or the BTR-80. And there's also the Modestrauki Metis. Uh, the Modestrauki Metis do have the IFV infantry trait because they can come in with the BMP-1P or the BMP-1PG. Then we have the Fargo squads and the Conquer squads. Both of these can come in with the BMP-1 SB-1, the BTR-50 PK, and the SBW-70. Uh, they do have the Resolute trait on both of these, the Conquers obviously being much better than the Fargo, so and that's what I would recommend. Uh, also bear in mind when picking these whether or not they have Amphibious trait or not, because that can be pretty useful in certain situations. Then we have the Pioneer Führer. Uh, this comes with four uh, MPI AK-74s with the RPG-18. The RPG-18 does have decent penetration and accuracy, especially at this veterancy. So a decent option for defending itself. Then we have the Pioneers, which do have the shock trait, which allows them to inflict more suppression when fighting at close ranges. Perfect for this kind of unit because of the satchel charges. They can come in with the BTR-50 and this SBW-70. Then we have the Pioneer AGI. Uh, these aren't very good. Uh, they look kind of cool. They have this like crazy RPG launcher thing, uh, which has 40 millimeter napalm charges. It fires three with every salvo and then reloads, but the damage is really low on the HE if you compare it to something like the RPO, which is significantly better. So these aren't terribly great. You know, they do have the shock trait and they are resolute. So as an infantry squad in themselves, they can just use their normal weapons to quite good effect. Uh, but the Sepedi RPO definitely going to be performing a lot better. Uh, so let's go over to the Sepedi. They have the uh, shock trait on their leader. Actually, so do the uh, Pioneer Fjodor. Uh The Pioneer Fjodor also has the resolute trait, whereas the Sepedi Komrati does not. So that's something to consider. Um, the Sepedi here, they do have the shock trait. Again, matches up quite well because of the actual charges. Uh, main thing here is that 
Obviously, one of these is the East German variant, and one of them is the Russian variant. One can come with the BTR60 PB, and the other comes with the SBW70, uh, which is pretty much the same thing, I believe. <laughs> uh, maybe just a slightly different model. I'm not sure you guys are going to correct me in the comments. It's not exactly the same thing. <laughs> I know that much. Uh, anyway, uh, similar enough um, in terms of Warno. But um, Sepali RPO squads, definitely much better than the Pioneer AGI. Then we have the Vakshitsun. Interesting new units that have been added to Warno. These leaders, they come with the leader trait, the shock trait, the security trait, and the resolute trait. Uh, so that's quite a nice combination. And they have Scorpions, STGs, and they have Estrella 2M. Now, this is not particularly the best thing to have as a leader because it's going to give away their position unless you have them on return fire. You're much better off having an AT weapon on your leaders, in my opinion. They can come in with the SBW PSH, which does have a decent gun, the 14.5mm uh, KPVT. Uh, good for suppressing infantry. But then we have the actual Vakshus and squads, and these are pretty cool. So the first one is a 10-man squad with scorpions and satchel charges. It does have the shock trait. It does have the resolute trait. So great for running at enemy infantry. And they also come in at base vet elite, which is really good. Although elite level of infantry has been nerfed a little bit because the... Special forces have kind of like taken over the highest veterancy level. Uh, anyway, um, Vakshusen as well, super good. 10-man squad, STGs with the M um, MGK and the RPO. Uh, this is a really, really solid squad. Definitely worth taking. Then we have Mutschutzenführer. And the Mutschutzenführer does have the IFV trait with the Resolute trait. Uh, you've got an option of all of the different... Uh, BMP1, so you got the BMP1 SP1, you got the BMP1 SP2, which has the Maliotka, you got the BMP1 P, which has the Fargo, and then you've got the BTR50 PK and the SBW70. Then we have the Motrids and BTR, which just have the Resolute trait that come in the SBW70, and then we have the standard Motrids, which come with the Resolute trait and again the option of all of those BMPs. We have the KDA. These are now reservists. So KDA Shudson, for example, not going to be as good as they were at all. Uh, they can be brought in with the SBW-152K still, but yeah, not going to be half as good infantry as they used to be now that they have that negative trait. They also naturally come in with the lowest veterancy level of poor, which also gives them more negative modifiers. So you can see how low the accuracy is. Then we have the Panzerjäger. Panzerjäger can come in with the BTR 50PK, the SBW 70, and the BMP 1 SB 1. The Panzerjäger themselves get 20 penetration RPGs, uh, which are pretty good. Uh, definitely a solid close range AT support unit. Then there's the Mutschutzen with extra MGs that can be brought in with the different options up here. Uh, but triple PKM going to help you pin down enemy squads quicker. Then we have Fauschimjäger. Fauschimjäger, really, really nice. They benefit from the special forces trait, which makes them take less suppression in combat, move faster and deal more damage, and get elite veterancy level. Uh, they have the shock trait, which inflicts more suppression when fighting at close ranges. They have the airborne trait, which allows them to forward deploy. And they also have the resolute trait. So overall, a huge buffs to the Fauschimjäger. And you can get the leader, which has four AKS 74s and the RPG 18. Then there's the standard Fauschimega squad, which is what you're probably going to want to be looking at, which has the AKS 74s with the MGK and the RPG 18. So decent penetration with good accuracy, especially with their high uh, veterancy and all of those juicy traits. And then we also have the Fauschimega Metis, which benefits massively with the accuracy buff on its Metis and then decent infantry engagement capability. Finally, we have the Pulimachiki. These guys have the BTR-80, BMP-1P, and BMP-1G 
options to be brought in. These are basically a machine gun squad uh, that can be used to pin down enemy infantry. And that's your lot for the infantry tab. It's quite a lot to go through, honestly, uh, but I'll get to the best options in a bit. Artillery tab. 120 more mortars you can get. Uh, you can either get them with the resolute trait or you can get them without the resolute trait. Uh, the ones without the resolute trait actually cost more for whatever reason. Uh, one is East German, one is Soviet. Then we have the ZIS-3. It's back <laughs> from Steel Division 2. <laughs> it's terrible. 75 points is really, really overpriced. It has trash HE and terrible AP. And there's the 122. Been in the game for quite a while. It's a relatively good artillery piece. And then we have the 130, which is, I think, quite oversized right now. <laughs> but 2.47 damage, slightly more damage, but much better range, as you can see. And we have the 152 from the Soviets, which has fantastic damage, 4.19, with 17,650 meter range. Nice big gun, but very vulnerable to counter battery because it's not very maneuverable. And we have the Gvozdka which has a similar gun to the 122. It's got a, yeah, it's basically the 122 uh, 2A18. So 2.32 damage. The Gvozdka is okay because they're kind of like relatively cheap and you can get decent numbers of them, uh, but not as good as like an Akatsaya, but maybe a potential option here because you don't have option of the Akatsaya. We do have option of the BM-21 Napalm Launcher. Uh, this comes with 40 rockets. It fires 20 at a time. Uh, it's okay for dislodging enemy units from a entrenched position, but other than that, it's not going to do too much damage. It will just cause suppression and uh, force them to move. Um, then you have the RM-70. Good for causing suppression again, but not going to do too much damage. Fires 20 rockets at a time. So you can actually get 40... Uh, sorry, <laughs> not 40 four salvos out of this which is not too bad before you have to reload it uh, so just for suppression's sake i think that rocket launchers are going to be more useful because suppression is i think more important in this patch uh, the Jurgen is also an option this has fantastic suppression uh, but again going to be lacking damage unless it gets some decent direct hits but usually because the rockets are so spread out and fire so slowly the enemy is going to be dodging and you're not going to really get much damage on target whereas the Buratino now this thing is still very juicy it has solid damage and suppression and it fires very quickly and just flattens an area it's, it's very good at flattening an area <laughs> so yeah, 380 points, definitely going to be a staple of this division. Now into the tank tab, we have the T-3485s available. These do come as reservist, so they will be taking more suppression, which is going to make them much worse for like spamming forwards than they were before. You get 15 on a card, two cards available. We do have the ZIS-2, another returning unit from Steel Division 2. Uh, this has 9 penetration at 1,750 meter range with 70% accuracy. The accuracy is actually really good. Now, this has potential to take out light vehicles, um, particularly transports and stuff, and maybe like plink side armor of tanks, but I'm not sure if it's worth the, like, the activation points, honestly. But it may be worth the price. Then there's the 100 mil. Um, with the Ace Gem. The Rapida AT is actually not too bad. I am a big fan of it because of its Ace Gem generally, but again, might not be worth the activation points in this deck. And there's Malyutka, which is your standard Malyutka vehicle with the 16 penetration at 2625 meter range. It does have the amphibious trait, so that's kind of handy. Um, then we have the T-55s, which do have the Resolute trait, so T-55As. Um, they come with decent veterancy, and they have 14 penetration with okay accuracy. Um, pretty good support tanks at close range against enemy infantry because of the double machine gun, and also can deal some damage to tanks if they're close as well. Then we have the BRDM-2 Conkers. 
Unfortunately, not a great HGM vehicle because it only has mediocre stealth. Uh, then there's the T55 AM2, which is basically an up armored version of the uh, T55A. It also has a more accurate gun. So there is that to bear in mind. Uh, you do pay 30 points more, but the extra armor is actually quite significant. Uh, then there's a card of T-80Bs available. These haven't really changed much. Nice thing about Soviet tanks is they do have auto loaders, which means that they don't suffer a rate of fire penalty under suppression. And then also the T-64BV. You can get the T-64BVK. So there you go. And then into the recon tab. Recon tab, not too much to look at. Uh, we have the Motogrenza, which can be brought in with the SBW uh, FUG. Um, this does have recon capability of its own without weapons. It is amphibious, so you can kind of like sneak this into cheeky positions. But the Grenza themselves, just a four-man squad uh, with AKs, is not too great. Uh, then we have the uh, standard Grenza, which does have a machine gun. Both of these do have resolute trait. The Alphcala, probably a better option because they have an RPG-18. Having like forward deployment recon with AT is definitely preferable. And you can bring them in with the UAZ-469 KPV, which does have the KPV-T machine gun, which can harass enemy infantry from range, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, it does have the resolute trait, so that's very good. Then we have the BRDM-2, standard armored recon. I probably don't want to get it in a fight too much. Uh, we do have the Alphcala BRM-1. Now this thing actually pretty nice because it does have exceptional optics. And uh, yeah, that's the main reason you bring it. Because it's the only unit you can get here that has exceptional optics. And exceptional optics does make a difference, especially when trying to spot into tree lines. Then we have the Motoraz Vedka, which can be brought in with a... BMP-1P that has recon capability, so that's cool. You can also bring it in with the MI-8T or the MI-8T with rockets on it, 57 millimeter rockets, you get 64 of those. It's a, a decent helicopter for harassing enemy infantry and light vehicles, uh, but very expensive. So be careful using that. Then we have the AA tab. We got the Strela 2M, which comes with the 4HE. Uh, at 31% accuracy, probably something you're going to want to ignore for 10 points. Uh, same with the Strela 2M, just, uh, well, not really much difference. <laughs> uh, just one of these is the Fauschenmeager variant, so it can forward deploy. Uh, then we have the Igler. The Igler is going to be like your standard man pad, 55% accuracy, 4 HE. Uh, we've got the Strela 10M, this is amphibious, uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, good infrared AA. Then we have the Kub, which is cheap long range radar AA. The accuracy can let it down sometimes, but otherwise it's going to pack a punch if it hits. Shilka, good for bringing along to screen your radar AA against like helicopters and also just to chip the last little bit of health off of an aircraft that gets hit by a Kub missile or a book missile. Um, that's what these are useful for. Um, they also suppress uh, pretty fast, so good for like stopping helicopters from doing damage. Might not do too much damage to helicopters themselves, though. You are going to need the help of infrared AA. Um, there's also the Barusa, which is going to be causing slightly less suppression than the Shilka and slightly less damage for more points. So do bear that in mind. It's just the Barusa is more accurate, um, which doesn't really make a difference considering how fast they are. Anyway, book the big boy 65 percent accuracy at 5300 meter range against aircraft this is your top notch air defense for 180 points vulnerable to seed though so uh, do bear that in mind uh, you will want to more or less keep these turned on uh, until the enemy aircraft come in keep them on like a group and then select the group and turn them on uh, as enemy aircraft come in and you know it's not seed Helicopter tab. Mi-24 DAAs are available. They come with the Yak B 12.7 mil on the front, which is good for killing enemy infantry. You've got the uh, infrared missiles there for dealing with enemy aircraft and helicopters, although you only get two of them, so bear that in mind. And you get 80mm rockets, which again, this is more of like a support helicopter against infantry than anything else. And we have the Mi-8 TV 
which comes with plenty of 57mm rockets. You got the MA8T with those beautiful gun pods, so 57mm rockets and the uh, big old Gatlin guns. And then you've got the MA8 TV with the extra rockets. So this is like smaller rocket pods, this is bigger rocket pods. Uh, so just more ammo capacity for extra points. Generally, I don't think these are worth it over the like Rocket 1 variants because you can just like land these and resupply them. Uh, whereas these are just going to cost you more and do the same thing. Um, then we have the MI-24 VP. This 23mm gun is useful for killing both infantry and light armor. It also has COCOM missiles which can engage at 2800m range. This range is not to be underestimated as you can outrange things like PVADs and other sort of like 20mm AA vehicles and stuff. So um, this COCOM missile is actually really good. And then the 80mm rockets there. Finally, moving on to the air tab, we have SU-22s galore. Uh, we've got the SU-22M4 with the 240mm rockets for 135 points. I'm not entirely sure how effective it is because I haven't tried it yet, but uh, there's potential that this could certainly dunk infantry squads at least, uh, potentially kill uh, light armoured vehicles in the AA. Then we have the SU-22M4, which comes with the cluster bombs, the two 500kg cluster bombs. We've got the napalm variant with 500kg napalm bombs. Uh, there's a MiG-21 BIS. These come with the four 250kg bombs. These are great for killing medium armor and obviously infantry squads. They can kill heavy armor if you bring them in in like twos or threes. You could probably kill something that's quite heavy. Then there's the MiG-23 ML, which is your only really air-to-air -air option or like dedicated air-to-air -air option. It comes with six infrared missiles and a 23 mil gun. 1,238 kilometer per hour speed is okay uh, with exceptional agility. Like it's going to shoot down enemy helicopters. Um, maybe not in one run though. Um, it depends how healthy the enemy helicopter is if, if it's got like 10 health for example if it's like an apache you probably won't one run it because of ecm um and this will be able to like dogfight enemy aircraft but overall not the most reliable aa but like i said it's the only option you have other than using su-22s um then we have the su-17 m4 this comes with 120 more rockets it actually has 20 of them which is pretty solid payload so there's some chunky rockets um with air to air option and the double 30 cal so i would say this is probably a nice option for dealing with enemy helicopters uh because it also because it has infrared and its main gun whereas the standard su-22 m4 which 135 points doesn't have those infrared if it had infrared as well this would be great for killing helicopters because yeah 30 percent ecm double 30 cal or well not 30 cal 30 mil uh cannon uh so yeah this is actually quite a nice option for shooting down expensive helicopters then we have the su-22 m4k which comes with those big old kh-29 t electro optical missiles for killing enemy tanks and then we have the su-22 m4 upk which is an interesting payload of gun pods so you get two 30 mil cannons, you get extra 23 mil cannons, and then you get rockets. Like this thing can do a lot of damage to even the heavy armor, especially if you hit it from the right angle. And that's your lot for units. This is like a lot more units here <laughs> than in the other division. Uh, let's quickly put together a deck. So I am going to be bringing in the MI-26. It's just a lot of supply and you don't really want to miss out. And since you can send back your smaller supply to go pick it up, we'll bring in some MTLBs and we'll bring in some T813 munition trucks. I am going to bring in uh, potentially the uh, Jeeps here to run about. Actually, no, what I'm going to do, we're going to bring in the MI-8T so that we can use that to quickly cap our back sectors. Then I'm going to bring in the... NSV machine gun, useful for keeping the enemy at our arm's length. I'm going to be bringing in the Fauschmig SPG-9s, great forward deployment option. Uh, we're also going to, of course, be bringing in the Fauschmig and the Wachschützen. Probably going to bring in both options for the Wachschützen and the Wachschützen Stoss. And I'm going to be bringing in the Fauschmig and the Fauschmig Metis. I think I'm going to drop one of the standard Fauschmig to just go for the double Fauschmig Metis because the 17... Pen penetration metis with 63% accuracy is really good. Um, so great 
options there. Uh, we have pretty decent options here for close range infantry. I think I'm just going to throw in another Separiapio. And potentially it'd be worth bringing in a unit with the BMP 1PG, but we'll come back to that if I have space. Now I'm going to pump in both of the Buratinos. This might actually make me want to bring in more supply, but since we have the um, good old MI26, we should be okay for supply. Uh, then I'm going to bring in some Govozdika. I think that's more or less it. I don't think the BM21s are worth it still. The BM27, it just doesn't fire fast enough. I think if they made MLRS fire faster, it would be more useful. Definitely bring in the T64 BVK and the T64 BV and the T80 BV. Other than that, I'm not sure what else I want to bring here just yet, so we'll leave it as is. Definitely want the BRM1s. I'm going to bring in the Motoros Vertica with the BMP1 Recon, and I'm also going to bring in the Alphatala with the UAZ KBV. I think th these are both great combinations of infantry and vehicles. For AA, we definitely want the books and we want the Shilkers because they do more damage and suppression than the Barusa. Then we want uh, probably a card of Cubs and some Iglas for man pad options, potentially the Strela 10M as well, but we'll come back to it. I'm going to bring in an MI24 VP and we'll bring in the MI24D. I don't think I'm going to take MI8s as options. We're going to use the MI24 to deal with enemy infantry. And then for the air tab, we'll go for the uh, MiG-23 potentially. Although I'm not sure if it's really necessary because you're going to have so many SU-22s. So we'll bring in a card of the SU-22 M4Ks because these, if you micro correctly, are the back line. Like say if you don't just fly straight towards the enemy unit, but instead like allow the missile to fire whilst you're pulling away. Um, these can be actually relatively good. We'll definitely bring in cluster because it's reliable. And then otherwise, I'm going to bring in the SU-17 M4 for those 122 mil rockets, but also as my anti-helicopter SU-22. And potentially we have space for the MiG-21s, but we'll come back to that, I think. We have 10 points remaining. So I think I will pop an extra unit into the infantry tab. It's a shame that we don't have any military police because it would have been nice to have the buff. We could put in conkers um, with maybe BMP1 SP1s. But I think potentially more Metis squads with the BMP1 PGs would be nice. So we could bring in Motostraki Metis. Other options. I just like the BMP1 PG. I think that's the, the main reason that I'm going to bring those. So yeah, we'll do that. Motostraki Metis, BMP1 PG. Right, we still have seven more points. I don't think the artillery tab needs any more. I think we could potentially put a unit of tanks into the infantry, or sorry, into the tank tab here, and that's going to leave us with four points. So I'll bring in some strellas, and that's going to leave us with two points. And the only place we can put two points is the artillery tab. I think I'm okay with that. We can bring in mortars. Or maybe the Yorogun. Yeah, we'll bring in the Yorogun because it's good suppression. Okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. All right, let's name this Unternehmen Zentrum. Do take my builds with a pinch of salt like they are not necessarily optimized but uh, based on what i've done so far with these divisions i think this seems okay okay let's just save that and we'll have a look at it there it is unternehmen zentrum so pretty cool deck does have the Wachschützen for close range engagements. You've got the Fauschmjäger for your mid to long range engagements, plus some extra stuff dotted in. So like support machine guns, motor striking masses with BMP1Gs. You've got the double Buratino, which is super strong. You've got plenty of supply for it. Uh, then you've got uh, plenty of decent mid range and heavy tanks. 
Uh, you've got some good helicopters in support. You've got some decent aircraft if you need them. Plenty of decent AA for sure, like the double book and four cubs. You can set up a great AA net. Like overall, this is a very well-rounded division compared to the Berlin Command, in my opinion. It doesn't have any glaring weaknesses. So that's it. Yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the look at this division. It's a bit longer than the last one because it is obviously a much more... Well, there's a lot more to go through. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of Unternehmen Zentrum in the description. Or it's not in the description, in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.